All right, I'm on my way to pick up Paul. As many of you know, if you've uh, tuned into the Hashtag Sports episodes, Paul had a, uh, he was a big fan of A.J. McCarron, to put it lightly. So, uh, I'm trying to play a little joke on Mario, who uh, lovingly bought me an A.J. McCarron Bills shirt. As, uh, as everyone has already found out, the Buffalo Bills have traded A.J. McCarron to the Oakland Raiders. Um, so, my son and I, Logan, lean over say hi. Hi. So, uh, Logan and I, this is the 11-year-old that I complain about all the time. <laughs> uh, he and I went and altered my Bills jersey to, to a Raiders jersey. So, I'm going to pick up Paul right now. He has no idea what I have in store for him. Um, so, we're going to play a little joke on Mario for the intro to today's show. Uh, let's, uh, let's see if we can make him laugh. I have no idea. However, I plan on playing a little trick on him when this starts. When he gets in the car, because you know he's a little, he's a little upset. AJ's not here anymore. Uh, so I gotta find Mario. Oh, there he is. I see my boy. I see my boy. And uh, I gotta go meet up with him so I can pop into uh, pop into the Kia, record a little Sunday drive action. There he is. There he is. Oh, gotta pop out and let's. Uh, Let's see what he thinks of my shirt. <laughs> Get over here. Oh <laughs> <laughs> you like my shirt? It's been a long day. Wait, wait. There's a Bills logo on the back, so I had to draw it with <laughs> 10. I had to draw a little Raiders logo. Okay. Sunday Drive! You've come a long way. I'll never Where forget. I quit. I'll never I'll let go. I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you again. Nathan Peterman is named your Bills starter. Heck of a revelation. Yeah. Um, welcome to the Tuesday Drive, guys. <laughs> so strange Whoops. to hear your starting quarterback, Nate Peterman. Just strange for well, me. You know, you I'm not. I'm not there yet as a Bills fan. I guess. You complete 80 percent of your passes in the preseason. I guess that'll earn you. Yeah. <clears throat> so praise. And, and uh, you know, Mike, uh, my brother texted me this morning. He said you cut McCarron and start Peterman? Why? And, uh, you know, I didn't think about it for a second. I kept going through it. Well, we didn't cut him. We traded him. Well, we traded him. Yeah, of course. And I kept going through it in my mind. I'm like, you know what? They drafted Peterman. So it's almost like a sense of they have to they have to do that because they drafted him mm -hmm. and, you know, they, they ended up using a resource, albeit a fifth round pick. Yeah. Sort of, sort of some tw sweet irony. This is an exit. But hey, you can use it as an entrance. No, everyone uses it as an entrance. Um, a little bit of irony, the fact that they drafted Peter in fifth fifth round. They got well, a fifth round pick for McCarron. So let's back that let's back that train up for a second. Because that I think that's a fair point, right? Yeah. So if Whaley had drafted Peterman the season before um, the season before McDermott took over. If that was the last Whaley draft class, like the official Whaley draft class, that was the previous regime's draft class, is Nate, is Nate Peterman, did he, Nate Peterman even make it to this preseason? He wouldn't even have made the plane ride home from LA. Okay. I think that's, <laughs> I don't think that's, well, I mean, they only kept like under 10 players from the previous regime when you look at, you know, the roster turnover. Absolutely. They've, they've yeah. turned over everybody. So I, I think it's a fair point to make that yeah. Peterman gets a shot because he was part of their draft class. He wasn't part of the previous regime under Doug Whaley, so I, I think that's very fair to to bring up as a point. I just um, <clears throat> I, I never known McCarron to be like an injury concern. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought he had. Well, more. you gotta you gotta play to be an <laughs> to be an injury concern. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hurt a little. Too shy. Why did that hurt? Oh, hurt my soul. I can just see McCarron going like this to you right now, dude. I know, right? Like, out of all people, if and to, and to protect. <laughs> Peterman progressed from last year to this year. It's a, it's a different guy. Yeah. Like, he didn't look like this in the preseason last year. Oh, no. Oh, um, no. You figure Dable can, can call plays that are tailored to his strengths. And um, 
hopefully the 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 trying to prove that he could throw an out route 30 yards is over for him. Let's not get lost today. We're, this isn't our typical stomping grounds. No, it isn't. We, we can, not, we can take a tour lost. of downtown if you like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you think the do you think your struts can handle it? <laughs> <laughs> Just stay off Buffalo Avenue for me, please. <laughs> I uh, My appointment with my chiropractor is not for a couple weeks, so I prefer if you stay off Buff Ave. What happened? What happened to the show this week, guys? Look like you were in a blender. <laughs> <laughs> Peterman has made, I mean, huge strides compared to last season like you could you could see it throughout the preseason I, I think there's some things to talk about Peterman that are things to watch and things to look for um, as things progress um, as with any NFL season the more tape that he gets on him mm -hmm. the harder his life is gonna be yes you know so um, we'll see how much Dable tipped his hand in the preseason. After the first preseason game, everybody was just raving about the offense, and then I heard that all go away. Just all went away after that. Yeah. So it'll it'll be very interesting to see how Peterman adjusts to when teams start adjusting to him. That's that's a challenge he has yet to face in his NFL career. So um, what if you had to give Peterman, if you were a defensive coordinator, one of the two things that you think you know about Nate Peterman that you can exploit to your advantage? What, what are those two things? Uh, obviously, inexperience. Yeah. Um, well, what, what do you mean when you say inexperience? You I just say, it? you know, you know, game reps. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he really doesn't have a lot of game reps. The, the, kid, the kid's pretty intelligent. Um, I would, as far as from a schematic standpoint, if I, I would play a cover two on him, but have the corners almost uh, they would play inside of the number one mm -hmm. receivers mm -hmm. uh, usually in a cover two you want the out the two cornerbacks want to funnel the guys in uh, to the safeties and everybody inside he can make those throws mm -hmm. I would go almost opposite of that and try to funnel him to the outside maybe even play a cover four and make him throw those passes to the outside a little bit more uh, I, I would put a log jam in the middle of the field for him because you got clay in there you're gonna have McCoy coming out on routes. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have they, they kept four tight ends. Dable loves running two tight end sets. It's no surprise that Dable kept <clears> tight ends. It's yeah. no surprise at all. Um, and in that sense, I mean, even to your point earlier, O'Leary was part of the previous regime. Mm -hmm. See you later. Deuces. Yeah. So Deuces. it's it's one of those things. I mean, we're not gonna talk about Kroom taking the Triple H path of success. It's all about the game. <laughs> now you play it. <laughs> um, there, you're right. There isn't a lot of tape on him. He happens to be a little bit late on some of his reads. You can try. You can try to exploit that. I don't think initially he is at the point where you could just blitz him and get him rattled. See, and I would still think that you would want to do that early in the game. Oh, absolutely. Just throw, throw a bunch of stuff at him yeah. and just see. Right. Yeah, but then you you know that you have the team. Either Buffalo is not at that level of hey they could score at will. So you're really, you're willing to take those chances, or you have a team behind you that could score. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things where, okay, how do we want to play this? How does it, how is this going to pan out uh, in, in the long run? So, <clears throat> can we just explain the Triple H path to success real fast for those people who who don't think wrestling's a sport? Yeah, I, uh, I don't think wrestling's a sport. Either, which part but... of it would you like me to describe? The fact that he uh, went went to date the boss's daughter. And ended up being a 13-time World Heavyweight Champion, <laughs> and uh, assessed as essentially assistant CEO. Like, yeah, yeah, he runs he runs that company. Essentially, he yeah, runs but that company. if you think about it, the guy is not just like resting on his laurels. He no. is he has immersed himself in the in the WWE and everything that and involved it, with it, and he runs NXT and everything. So, but how it started was he started dating Vince Boss McMahon's daughter, daughter Stephanie McMahon. Kelly Pagula come to mind? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chrome? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chrome, I presume? Mm -hmm. uh, it's that's, that's playing with fire. I mean, it's... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you remember the program? Oh, yeah. Came out in 92, so I don't know if it's relevant for you. 1992 is the program. He goes, <laughs> Coach finds out you're with his daughter. You're playing dorm ball, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Coach gets for not starting me. <laughs> And, and the X factor that you're going to have to take in, if we could circle this back around Peterman, X factor you got to take in is that McCoy didn't play very much. 
neither Clay. I haven't seen Clay. So you 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 have two essentially of your top offensive weapons now inserted into the lineup. How does that change how they play Peterman? I mean, you can't say that McCoy's job makes Peterman's job harder because that's certainly not the case. No, and he may. If, if you're going to say he's going to struggle early on, it's because with McCoy in there, there's going to be more guys in the box, so those out routes will be available for him. Yeah. Can he make those on time? That's the thing that got me a little bit about Peterman was while we saw the progression, I still saw that quick tri- quick trigger first read. Go. Like, yeah, no, it's, if it's, it's there, it's, take it. Yeah. That's what, yeah. It's, the, I, I didn't see him work through as much as I would have liked to. Um, especially since he played against first team defenses most of the time. You know, oh, he yeah. still looked good. He still looked good. I but mean, it's, he often threw to his first read. If you want to, if you want to think about it in this respect, Peterman minus the Chargers game. All last year, he was playing against that Buffalo Bills pass defense, which essentially was very, very good. Mm-hmm. Didn't rank very good, but they had turnovers galore. Yep. So he had to see it in every day in practice. He had to run the other team's offense against his defense in practice every day. So, I mean, maybe that could have helped him out. Maybe the the drive and the motivation, because we always talk about quarterbacks having huge chips on their shoulders. You know, the, you know, L.A. Chargers is right here on his. He doesn't want to go back to that at all. So, it could be one of those instances where he's like, listen, that's not going to be my defining moment in the NFL. Oh, you drafted a guy seventh overall? Yeah, I don't care. I'm going to try to play as long as I can. You but can't care if you're Peterman. You can't care about that. That's not – you just got to hold him off as best you can. You got. You have to be Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers. You have to play well enough to keep him on the bench for, for, for that many seasons. That's what, that's what you have to do. So is he playing with house money, you're saying? Yeah, he, if, if he plays well enough this season, he knows he writes his ticket to seven other NFL teams at the end of the season. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, he could. He definitely could. It's case it's a Case Keenum esque situation where if he plays well enough, he'll be wanted by seven teams at the end of the season. I don't see Shermer in the box. No, <laughs> I'm not saying it's going to happen. <laughs> I, I I can get some hate mail for this, but I don't expect them to have a winning season. I'm not feeling they're going to be real good. I'm very curious about. McCoy and Murphy mm. that transition but mm. that but that's the difference between McCoy to Murphy and Peterman to Allen is that in the running back situation you can work a transition and you're not doing that at quarterback oh no nope. you're ripping that band-aid off one day and just saying okay this is what we picked if this Dable was do. known for creating two <clears throat> offenses in college for Hertz and Tua he has to do that Mm-hmm. Now with Peterman and Allen because yeah. they have such different skill sets. Oh yeah, it's yeah they're not it's not even close. Like they're polar opposites. I have polar a question opposites. for you. Sure. Speaking of polar opposites, Tyrod's gone. Yeah. What if anything did Peterman learn last year watching Tyrod every day in practice? Do you think there's anything that he transferred to this year other than the leadership? factor because I think he probably took some leadership qualities from Tyrod do you want my funny answer and then my real answer I would love both of those hopefully yes. it's he learned how to take care of the ball <laughs> in practice clearly that in the Chargers game that didn't work out so well but um, probably being thrown to the wolves yeah that was bad um I don't know dude like it's you didn't see Tyrod do all the little things that you want to see a quarterback do. You didn't see him move protection. You didn't see him. No, that was all Wood. That's Wood what I mean. Yeah. And that's that's a big topic of conversation is that offensive line and, and that transition. I don't know if Peterman could pick up stuff from Tyrod that was on the field specific. I really don't. I really don't. Their, their, their skill sets were so different. And Taylor was notorious for protecting the football and Peterman wanted to make that decision quick and that was the thing about Tyrod is he couldn't make a decision so I, I don't know because the only thing I'll add to that really quick <clears throat> the thing that Tyrod used to do and I, I wish he would have did it more his initial move in the pocket was always correct but then he would keep running yeah 
So when he had to shift where the pocket was going to be or step up or do something like that, it was good if he could just throw the ball. But then he would just keep continuing on running. Mm -hmm. If P if they've seen that in the film room and Peterman was there watching, he says, all you got to do is kind of like slide this way, slide that way, you know, if certain blitzes come at you. That's all you need to do. And because I saw his footwork vastly improved this year yeah. in the preseason. Looked know? totally different. Yeah. Looked like a totally different QB. Will Peterman be the uh, be the answer to the Bills? We will see. Even if he is, dude. Hell, let's get the shot. Oh, absolutely. Unless this is a Paxton Lynch situation. That one hurt a little bit. I like Paxton Lynch coming out of Memphis a lot. Ugh. Cut. Hit it. 